United Faith Ministries International Native Fest is back by popular demand. Saturday, July 6, 2 p.m. through 6 p.m. Take your mouth on a culinary creative journey through the islands of Grand Bahama through Inagua. Admission is just $25 for adults. Kids 6 through 11 is $12. And kids 5 and under eat free. That's right, you heard us. Meet us right here, number 126 Fire Trail Road East. For more info, call us 341-0502. And welcome to this very special edition of Faith Touch. I'm so delighted that you're able to join us on today. Well, indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so delighted today to say happy Father's Day to all of the wonderful fathers. First of all, of our ministry, headed by our own dear Bishop Buford Curtis, our dear pastors, Pastor Christopher Strone, and indeed, Pastor Delwyn Maycock. To all the wonderful fathers of UFMI, and indeed, the fathers of our nation, we wish for you today that the blessings and favor of the triune God will be upon you as you celebrate this very special day, Father's Day. Well, of course, I'm excited uh, to be here on the set. Um, again, this time I'm joined by a group of very special, honorable men. These men bear the anointing of God, and they are leaders and pastors at this great church, United Faith Ministries International. I'm delighted to have them on the set today as we celebrate them. Let's make our introduction First of all, on the set, I'm excited to have our own dear bishop. Happy Father's Day to you, sir. Happy Father's Day to you also, Apostle, and it's a pleasure to be here. Happy Father's Day to all of the men in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and indeed the world at large. Amen. That's Father's Day. Amen. A very blessed and happy Father's Day to you, Pastor Christopher Strong, Senior. God bless you, Apostle, and happy Father's Day to you likewise and to all of the men in this nation. Amen. And a very blessed and happy Father's Day to you, Pastor Delwyn Maycock. God bless you, Apostle. And indeed, I concur with Bishop and Pastor Strong and send a happy greeting, a happy Father's Day to all of you fathers watching in the nation and in the world at large. God bless you. Now, let me just say, because uh, my father is gone, uh, but I think um, you may have a father alive. I know Bishop's father is gone, and so if you do have a father, please take that moment to I wish you. <laughs> yes, sir. I appreciate you, Apostle, for allowing me to do so. Yes. And I just want to send a happy Father's Day out to Deacon Dwight Maycock, yeah. uh, my father, man, awesome man of God. I, I praise God for you, man, and I thank God for what he's doing in and through your life. God bless you, Daddy. Amen. Pastor Strong, yeah. Well, I've never had a oh. father to say happy yes. Father's Day to or to call a father. Yes. But I, there have been some men in my life who has left a lasting impression. Yes. So I'd like to, first of all, I'd like to say happy Father's Day to you, Apostle. Thank you again. And to all of the men that has left a, um, an a, a impact in my life. God bless you all. Happy Father's Day. Well, let me say a very 
a blessed and happy Father's Day to my spiritual father, Bishop Cardinal McIntosh, all the way out of Grand Bahama. And of course, uh, there are some other spiritual fathers today. I'm honored to say a very blessed and happy Father's Day to Bishop Bryce H. Thompson and, uh, of course, uh, to Bishop Neil Clarence Ellis. Uh, honored to call them uh, fathers. Uh, and, of course, to Bishop Ross Davis, all of these men who've been in my life. Happy Father's Day to you. Well, uh, brothers, this year we are advancing the kingdom of God through divine order. If there is ever a time that the church of, of the living God is in need of divine order, it is now. Um, as it is in the earth, there is so much disorder, so much chaos that is taking place. And this month, incidentally, I want to say uh, that our declaration this month is this year we are eliminating chaos and division. Yes, We're excited about this. We've been already talking about it. Uh, we've had um, two Sundays already, and uh, I, I'm excited about the word that has come. But brethren, um, we know that our God is a God of order. Uh, from the very beginning, the Lord uh, saw the chaos that was in the world. And the scripture shows us quite clearly that God spoke the word through faith and brought uh, that which was void and chaotic, brought it into order. And then he brought us and said to us, he made man and said to man, listen, your job is to keep it in order. All right? And in the day that you do not, <laughs> chaos will be, will be the order of your life for the rest of your life. <laughs> And uh, um, today we want to talk about this, uh, uh, this topic, this declaration, eliminating chaos and division. And today I want to talk about it from the uh, point of view of, of a family, right? So first of all, I want to ask um, my brothers, what, uh, can you define for me, what is chaos? Anybody? Chaos is something that is out of order. Yes. Order, disorder, or confusion. That's my definition for chaos. That's the dictionary definition for chaos. Yes. Now, based on this, uh, Bishop, it would seem to me um, that whenever we are not um, functioning in order then, we have chaos. We want to talk about it. Let's talk about it from the family point of view because um, we're, we're, talking about, um, we're talking about eliminating chaos and division. I need to back up um, um, one of you brethren. Please uh, um, define for us. And I think um, Pastor Strong did such an awesome job with this uh, for us on the word eliminating. Talk to us, Pastor Strong. We're, what does that word eliminating means uh, for us? Eliminating means to basically remove, mm -hmm. to take out, you know, to um, just put aside. Yes. You know, um, anything that is unwanted, you know, hey. we just take it away. Take it away. It. Yes. Discard it. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, but let, let me ask you a question. Uh, um, why does it seem like... Uh, um, we are so we are so content about um, not removing the garbage from our lives. Well, well, should be told, you know. Um, I'll paraphrase it: sin is sweet, Whoa. but at the end, is destru destruction. Yes, there are some that love to be in a sinful state because it's sweet. Mm -hmm. They're in their comfort zone, and they just like having fun, mm -hmm. you know. But we know that all of this is 
um, against the law of God. Right. You know, so anything that um, goes against the law of God is sin. And this is what we look at as chaos. We want to eliminate this. Anything that goes against the law of God. Amen. Pastor D, uh, from your point of view, what is spiritual, uh, what, what, what is the vision spiritually? The vision is, this is going to sound funny, but is double vision. Wow. Uh, let, let me explain that. Okay. Uh, no man could serve two masters. Yes. Either he loves one and hates the other. Uh, division often is caused when there's an infiltrating vision that comes in the midst of an already established one. Hey. So as a result, you have division, which is the death of a vision that has already been established. Wow. And, and, and that causes the death of a whole uh, community, a church, a home. And as a result, God is not glorified. Wow. Let, let me ask you, because um, um, I want to ask us then this question as we celebrate uh, Father's Day. Um, there is so much, there is so much pressure on the family um, as it is today, because what, has, what was known as the traditional family to a great extent is being challenged. Sir. Brothers, what do you say to this? In other words, then, let, let, me, let me put it in this way. God is a God of order. Yes. Yeah. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, um, Paul um, categorically stated the order of God. Yes. Talk about that for a moment. Apostle, the, one of the greatest tactics of the enemy is to understand God's order. Okay. And unfortunately, he seemingly understands it better than some of God's own people. Wow. To destroy a house, you don't look at the windows or the roof mm -hmm. or the walls. Yeah. You look at the foundation. Mm -hmm. The foundation is what has been under attack for so long. Okay. And as the scripture that you have quoted, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, mm -hmm. we see God's order where Christ is the head of man, man yes. is the head of the wife, and God is the head of Christ. Yes. And in the homes now, in our modern day times, we, the world has constructed uh, uh, a building that is counter to what God originally created. Whoa. And, and what they have done, Apostle, is they have taken the leader, the, the head of the home, and, and changed him from being a him to something else. Wait, wait, God. <laughs> yes, sir. Wait, it's Father's Day now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I got, that's what I got. That's uh, yeah. the truth. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. And so as a result, as a result, we have, we have the, the, the collapse of the family that God had originally established. Father, mother, children, all being led by the spiritual leader of the home, which is the father. And when there's an absentee of the father, automatically the foundation starts to crumble. Well, I, I have to ask this. Um, you you kind of tipped on the next question, which was, what do you then uh, suggest is the root cause uh, for, uh, for division, chaos and division, the root cause, root, root causes, when be, anybody can answer? I would say the absentee of order which is the father. Okay. That, to, for me, that's what that would be. Go ahead, Pastor Strawn. Uh, well, we know that um, Satan has come to kill, yes. steal, and to destroy. Yes, sir. We know that for every, let's take, for example, a car. Mm -hmm. um, we know that there's a manual for a car. Yes. If you want to get that full um, performance out of that vehicle, um, you go to the manual. For our lives is the Bible. Yes. Anytime we step away from God's word My to God. do our own thing, then we're going to find ourselves in problems. We're going to find ourselves mm -hmm. in chaos. Mm -hmm. You know, God has called the man to lead. Yes. So when the man go ahead and they do what they feel like doing, um, not honoring God's word, we're going to find ourselves in problems. Yes. You know, so God has called us to um, live by his word. The Bible says we are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. All right. It may be that. 
we don't have the knowledge and the understanding of the word as well as we may have the understanding and refuse to do it mm -hmm. so therefore um, an absentee of God's law and word in our lives causes us to do all sorts of stuff man I, I really I that that is good that's, that's really you know I there is, Bishop there is a there is a a huge call now for women leadership um, you know, uh, some countries have gone to the to the extent of um, electing women as now president or prime minister of the country. There is a huge call, and I believe um, that with this call for women now to take leadership, in some cases. Uh, are diminishing the role of men in society and even as fathers in the home how what is our view on what uh how does this lend to chaos and division in in our homes and in society well, well we will be going when the chaos step in is when we are against the order yes that god has set down a like, the pastor D said there's a foundation. So if there, the absentee of the male in that home, even in our society, um, when men don't take the rightful place, mm -hmm. even in society, you will have chaos. Mm -hmm. Even in some organization where there is quote unquote majority of women on at top mm -hmm. there is chaos in that organization because <laughs> they don't even seem to could get along. <laughs> they need a man to really steer them in the right direction. And it it you know it creates because we are we are we are out of line of what God really wants, where he said the man is the head, Christ is the head of the man, the man is the head of the woman, mm -hmm. and so so on and so forth. So if we deviate from that, that's the order God laid down. If we deviate from that, what did you expect to happen in our society, in our homes? You will have that chaos. Now, there are some homes that the woman has to take that role right. of being the father right. and the mother because the man is just weightless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's facts. Yeah. That's facts. So oh, wow. the woman take that role um, and she does the best. But still, there's some things lacking that a, a young man needs to a wrong lady needs to have, and that could only come from the man being in that home. Wow. Now, that, that's powerful. You know, um, I think of the fact that there are so, many, so much um, violence, anger, uh, and confusion among our children, brothers, uh, and... I mean, we must, we must face the facts that there is just too much violence in our schools and, and around our children today. What um, can we uh, say as, this, as it relates to this breakdown that's taking place? Um, how, how, do we, how do we attribute this? How do we attribute this to a breakdown in the family structure? Apostles, you know, talking about, I think in society, in regards to men, I think society causes men, some men to be the way they are. Yeah. The reason I say that, because we tend to try to tell men that, you know, you really can't show your emotions. Yeah. Yeah. So they have that emotion penned up. If a man, a young boy cried, boy, what you crying for? <laughs> man don't cry. What you mean, man don't cry? 
man has emotions, just like a woman has emotions. Right. So right. you need to cry sometimes to get rid of that, yes. what is pent up inside. So I think we try to keep young men from expressing themselves, and they express themselves in other ways, because mm -hmm. they can't share the emotion. Um, you have persons, you have men who would be abused in our society, Mm -hmm. And uh, you go to the police station, they will laugh at you because, which, you know. You got to be a man. You got to be a man. <laughs> but I mean, hey, listen, you, know, <laughs> you have a man who will be abused by women, you know. Yes. But they can't report that because how society looks at them. That, hey, you, <laughs> it can't happen, but it happened. So yeah. man tends to just keep things with inside of them. Instead of expressing themselves to get rid of that built up what's inside, that anger, that frustration that's inside of them. Somebody has made what you live with. And, and you know, Bishop, that's so true. And Apostle, you know, we, we have, we have a, a cry that is taking place right now that's not being heard because yeah. the, the actions of our young men is the, is the cry. It's yeah. the cry saying we need someone to, to hear what we're saying uh, and look past what we're doing and understand where it's coming from. Yeah. And, and what is happening uh, as a teacher in the public school uh, system, I, I, would, I would say this to you, Apostle, and I, as we're speaking to the nation right now, our young men are hurting. Yeah. They're, wow. they're, a lot of their fathers have abandoned them, yeah. and so their way of dealing with it is to act out. Yeah. You yeah. know, they, they come to my classroom and... and, and instead of being able to vocalize their emotions, they just sit there and stare. Or, or, or they would come to my desk and they would just, you know, randomly ask me questions that apparently they can't ask at home. Yeah. And, and I have to take the time and, and minister to them in that, in that area because they don't have it in the homes. Right. And so they're finding it in the streets. They're right. finding it in the gangs. They're finding it in, 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 in wrong company. Because anyone who pays attention to them, they give their service to. Wow. Wow. And so, and so the silent cry of our young men is being seen in the activities that are taking place in the streets. But, but there also, um, the, there is a, a growing um, diocese of young ladies that are also finding themselves in daily conflict. Um, how, what, what do you say about that, uh, Pastor Strong? You can chime in as well on this uh, discussion as we talk about this breakdown that's taking place. What is absent? What is absent? I know the, the father may be absent, but it, isn't there some other things that God calls us to so talk about? It. I believe, um, Apostle, that love is a, is, a, is a powerful weapon. Yes. I believe in the homes, um, yes, sir. Um, persons, are, children are being abused, verbally abused, talked down to, mm -hmm. and um, this causes anger. This causes children to go out, go out. Yes. And they're looking for love. They're looking for comfort. Yes. And believe it or not, the streets are teaching our children. Wow. You know, um, the schools are teaching our children. They're going to teach them everything other than the, the foundation of God. They're going to teach them everything other than the word of God. We know wow. that the word of God is love. Wow. The word of God corrects us. The word of God keeps us yes. in line um, and guide and protects us from chaos and division. While you are it, what's the role of the church then um, to eliminate the chaos and division in society? Well, the church has been called to be the light of the world, uh, to be the salt of the earth. Yes, we are God's answer. We are the solution in yes. the earth. Yes. yes. So, um, I, I applaud you, sir, when you allow the church to go to evangelize. A yes. lot of persons on the outside, they're not going to come into the walls because yes. the walls judge them on sight. The, world, the, the church judged them sometimes um, by a parents. And, you know, you find persons who grew up on the street, they're not comfortable coming into the house of the Lord, maybe yes. because they don't have the attire and stuff like that. So we go out on the streets and we present the word of God. We show them love. Um, we not only show them love, but, you know, we take care of the whole man. We give them the word. We give them um, food. Um, yes. We give them clothes. This ministry, I can say, takes care of the whole man. Wow. 
Praise God. Amen. Yes, sir. Praise. You know, I, as, we, as we're celebrating uh, fathers um, today, and, and you know, the truth be told, our churches, Bishop, Pastor, uh, uh, are filled with women. Very few men. What, what do we do? What, what should we do? Well, let me chime yes. in real quick. Um, yes. I believe that the women have the power and the know-how to get their men in church. Oh, man. You All right? said something. I believe that, <laughs> listen, love is the key once again. Yes. We got to speak into our men and let them know, look here, you are my priest. Now, that fella could be a drunkard. He could be slamming dominoes all day. But listen, you got to put into your man. You got to speak life into him and let him know that you are the man that wow. God, you are the person that God has blessed me with. I honor you. You got to show respect. If you want that man to move, uh, if you want that man to um, be what God wants him to be, you got to speak into his life. You got to cover him in prayer. I don't, I, I don't mind what position he's in now, but you got to cover him because he is your man. He is your wow. rib. You went to the aisle and you said, this is my, my spouse. So listen here, cover him in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, apostle, um, yes. Like an old preacher said a time ago, if you, the man in your life, if you want to be a king, you have to treat him as a king. Yes. The woman in your life, if you want to be a queen, you have to treat her as a queen. Yes. So if you want to be a king, and the woman in your life, you have to treat her as a queen. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's the principle. Yes. But, you know, it still boils down to love, you know. Mm -hmm. Love is the key. Love is the key that opens a lot of doors. Yes. But, you know, even, even my father... Even my father, he, he was the best father that I knew, right? But I don't think we really express love by words. They do, they do for you, but I can never even recall the, the um, 30 years I, um, on earth with my father. No, I, over 29 years or so. I've never heard him say to me that, hey, son, I love you. <laughs> wow. You understand what I'm saying? Wow. Like, we, do, we don't say those things to our children. Right. I mean, I may do it now. I mean, I, I do it to my children. I do it with my grandson. He hear it on a daily basis. I mean, several times a day. But I'm saying, the old school, back in the day, never expressed that to you. They do what they have to do. They take care of the family, but you never hear, Boy, son, I really love you. Daughter, I really love you. That was never expressed in words. Yes. You know, and I think that is what's missing in society. People want to hear it. People see you doing things, but they want to hear you express it by your words. This has been good, but we are out of time. <laughs> we are completely out of time, and uh, we, are, we are just so excited. Um, we're just so excited. We, our panel is there. I know we have not heard them yet, uh, but y'all just, y'all give the Lord a real clap offering praise. <laughs> Amen. We're grateful. Um, but as I said, we are completely out of time for this segment. And we want to just say to every one of you, if you're looking for a church home today, please join us right here at number 126 Fire Trail Road East. A people that is reaching people, changing lives. This is indeed our year of divine promotion. Until next time, this is Apostle Falman A. Ferguson saying, choice blessings, happy Father's Day. Thank you for listening to our program today. For prayer, counseling, or encouragement, please call us, 341-0502. Send us an email, united.faith at yahoo.com, or like us on Facebook, United Faith Ministries International. We would be delighted to hear from you. Wishing to fellowship with us? Meet us at our sanctuary, number 126 Fire Trail Road East, off Samila Butler Highway, every Sunday morning for our divine worship service at 9 a.m. For all other service times and broadcast schedules, visit our website, ufmi.org. 
On behalf of our senior pastor, Apostle Felman Ferguson, and the family of United Faith Ministries International, thank you for sharing with us. Join us next week on this station, and remember, we walk by faith and not by sight.